It's the 22nd day of January 2024. There are people here who post, oh, you got the year wrong, 2023. Minor things like that. You wouldn't believe how many people want to know the finest detail. Maybe I went to a funeral over in Galway because some man worked with me years ago of his of his brother. And who was his brother married to? And, and who, who was his son? Is his son in England? What's he doing? To think I, I'm going around gathering useless information. The name of this program, of this channel here, is Real True Education, not Fake News. That's very important to understand that. So we're dealing here with the death of Ian Bailey, Bailey and the murder of, of uh, what it, uh, Sophie Truscon de Plantier, the poor thing, was brutally walloped to death with a stone or a brick uh, uh, the 22nd day of Christmas 2000 and, uh, sorry, uh, 22nd day of December 1996. That is a long time ago. I make it 27 years, is that right? Anyway, she was brutally beaten at her home in West Cork. Now, there's no need for me to itemise at all. It's all there for you online if you want it, folks. And sorry for being a bit a bit contrary today, because the, all the surrounding this typifies my campaign about the dysfunctionality and, and villainy of the Irish Republic. And also to give a wallop to people who vote Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil and Labour. You are partly responsible for the failures around all this investigation. And I keep trying to tell people that, and it's not a very popular thing to do. But these are the facts. Now, what I want to get at here is give a bit of the surrounding. I may have to do another video. I wasn't expecting this today. I was going to, I was going to do a, a video on something totally harmless and else. But um, so, so we're going to look at this. The first thing you realise is that Ireland has one guard the commissioner. It doesn't have a whole lot of regional police like other countries like Britain, which has something like 43, I think, in England alone. It is one Garda commissioner. It is a technical bureau. It is all that. The Garda Shikana was founded on pure brutality. In its early stages, it was shocking political upheaval with Ono Duffy and all of that. The Garda themselves were treated like you treat school children in an orphanage, a bit like Charles Dickens. Uh, uh, a bit to Charles Dickens times. So, Garda wasn't liked in Milford and Donegal to be promptly transferred with his family and all to Wexford and vice versa. And it was brutal. Fianna Fáil was a brutal party. Fine Gael was a brutal party. But in any event, in the Garda Shikana in the 80s and around that, when the IRA were banging away and belting away and the UDA and all of this and all of this political violence, a murder squad developed and it was to deal with all kinds of violence and there was a big crowd of them. One of them died recently, Jerry O'Carroll. I don't know, was he a hard man to booze? I don't know. PJ Brown was another one. He died a while back. He was a sergeant in it or a guard, I don't know which. Uh, the ones that are dead, I named them. There was a Colin Brown, an inspector, which was had his own little type of murder squad as well. Well, one of the things that was about it, if any young guard joined that that crowd, you'd need to be able to drink and buy drink. You were getting extra allowances and all of that. And they were all in their, in their spare time, it was straight up to the pub for a big meal and loads of whiskies, brandies, vodkas, beers, wines and everything else and talking a load of horse manure but the one thing about them was they were fairly professional when it came to dealing with with the scene with dealing with the crime itself when a crime happened and they got word they dispatched the nearest man down and he'd take tell the super what to do now the thing about the guards is that a lot of the superintendents are promoted from taillight detections the number of taillights they get into the district court Patrick Malone was a commissioner and he boasted that he prosecuted his wife for having no light on the bicycle. This was the ethos of the guards and this was the ethos of the Catholic Church. This is why all this abuse took place. They were total bosses. They could do what they liked. They were like the plantation owners in the United States with the slaves. And by the day wallow in this. And there was an iron heel disciplinary 
approach. I knew a man joined the guards way back in the 30s and he gave it up and bought a wee threshing mill and went around threshing corn. He said it was the best thing I ever did. And it was well known that the that the the mental health and and contentment of a guard or a sergeant was was contingent on the state of madness of the superintendent and chief superintendent and all of that. In any event, there were the Kerry baby cases where the girl in question told the guards, I left the body out there in the drain and they never went out with her to check it. The proper thing to do was take her out and say, where is it? They didn't do it and the misery they caused was unbelievable. Now, there were several things like that, but I can go on about these things. But sometimes then the IRA would kill people and they catch them and they were catching a lot of them. And an ordinary civil type uh, murder squad was not fit for these people. These were toughies. And yes, they were walloping them, beating them, hanging them out of windows and all like that. There was a bit of that. But in any event, they were quite professional. They were never caught out much for making mistakes. There was a sample, I think, in the Kerry Babies that was a big question. But they, they, they were doing the job, but they were very expensive. And the local superintendent there was trying to get promoted because he didn't have too much overtime. And these landed in, and they drove his over, over overtime bill through the roof. And he tried not to pay it, but they made him pay it. They would bully him into paying it. They'd get the commissioner to make him pay it because the local superintendent paid the expenses in his area. So anyway, the next thing was about 19... There was a commissioner, Larry Wren, and uh, he, you can look him up there yourself, but about 1990, the Gardaí went on a de-skilling, a de-skilling programme. And that involved job rotation. So if you were on the murder squad for four years, you got off it and you were put out checking cars for taillights, Okay. If you were the sergeant in some town, maybe occupying a guard the house there, when your five years was up, you got out. If you were a detective guard and you were trying to become a good detective and studying all the stuff, assuming you could get appointed detective because there was there was such pull and such political influence and such within the job influence that sometimes the greatest idiots got in to be detectives. And I knew a case where a chief superintendent was having to retire for age grounds and he appointed a total nutter as a detective sergeant just so that he could sit back in his retirement and realise the, the, the problem he was leaving for the person who took over. Not all of them were like that. And sometimes, particularly when the IRA were causing problems and were seen as a threat to the state, they would appoint and promote the best people to deal with that because they were afraid of them. You get the kind of thing. Anyway, the first part of, of de-skilling was about a 10-year period of job rotation. It was announced about 1990 that there was no more keeping your job for life. You had to change around. The result was people that were in comfortable jobs, maybe the guard up in the local town, wouldn't accept, wouldn't apply for specialist jobs because he was going to be horsed out of it in four years' time. The sergeant in the town up above didn't want to lose his house, maybe his family were living there, it was a guard of the house, or he didn't want transfer, and so he wouldn't apply. So you got a de-skilling. Then when they realised about 1999 that this was a sham, that this couldn't work, they called the whole thing off. That is the reality. There was a Pat Byrne, and there was, I think Pat Byrne was the commissioner that decided this couldn't work. And there was Culligan there before, there was Wren, there was a Crawley fella, it doesn't really matter who they are, but you'll get them there, the list, I have them here, there's no, no big need, no big deal. The next, that was de-skilling. So encompassed in the de-skilling was to remove the murder squad and not have these going around on big money, drinking and going mad and, and all of this. And I can see the point in that, but at the same time, they never, I repeat, I repeat again, they never, and I repeat it again, they never assessed what they would replace it with. And so... The, the view of the guard authorities at that time was there's plenty of skill down there on the ground. There's plenty of skill in Loch Ray. There's a detective in Athlone. There's a detective in Bantry in Cork. There's a detective in, in New Ross in Wexford. He'll do the job. He'll do the job. We don't need these murder squads at all. Do you get the point? Now, I might do another video to fine tune this, but I want to keep me, me track because I have the computer here. I can get all that detail for you. But, but that was the point. So that was the de-skilling 
uh, exercise. The other thing they brought in about 1990 was performance development and review. They sent a couple of these idiotic commissioners and people over to America and they sent them to England and they got loaded up, weighted down with uh, management technique. Now, I happen to have a business degree course which involves management, and the management in the guards is called bog standard. It's pure bog hole job. But the thing about it was they decided to give them uh, instruction and there were special courses on all this uh, uh, performance, development, and review. Are you with me now? So this was the guard in Bantry would be told, you have to have one public house case, you have to check, get an offence in a public house. You have to have two drunk drink drivers in the next year or the next half year. And there was key result areas and you have to investigate a burglary and get the culprit there. There was a culture in the south of Ireland that if a burglary or a crime was committed, a smallish crime, by somebody in Dublin, you did not go up and investigate it. The superintendent in the south did not believe it, whereas in the northern part of the country, the guards would go up and lug these gougers out, drug addicts and all the rest, and bring them down to the station and try and solve crime. And it was a horrible job, it was tough, and the grannies and entourage would arrive with them. Of course, they wanted a load of women in the guards. A lot of the women didn't like mixing them with these ruffies, and they, nowadays they're not investigating crime at all. As I understand it, minor crimes are not investigated. Please don't quote me on that, that's for another day. But I know a scenes of crime examiner who used to go to the scene of crime and he'd know who did the crimes and he'd tell the locals and nothing was done about it because it wasn't anything in it. And so we have a situation now where there's no crime being investigated. So we we'll check that again. But in any event, the performance development review meant that that guard there in Bantry or in, 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 in Fermoy had his goals, key result areas to achieve. The next thing, the plenty of murder happened and the guards called in the likes of this guard and he was expected to down tools and to go and go around taking statements to preserve the scene to do lots of stuff and all of that and if he spent the six months on the plenty of murder and did a good job when he went back to his local station they looked to see how many how many drunk drivers have you zero how many um, um uh, how many publicans did you catch zero you're no good no promotion for you this is the lunacy, the lunacy that they brought in. You're expected to know, the guard in the station was expected to know what was going to happen next year. He had no idea there was going to be a murder. <coughs> Some sergeant with an inspector f full of crap said, said oh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this now. We need to clamp down on uninsured drivers. You'll get three of those, John. Uh, we need to clamp down on tax. The government's losing a lot of revenue. We are need to get six of those. Go out and do a checkpoint. Right? Well, when the murder of the Plantia happened, that fellow wasn't involved in it at all. See? Moreover, the people that came down with the murder squad long ago used to um, claim off the local superintendent, and they didn't like that. Now, back in the 70s, there was a chief superintendent, Dan Murphy, and there was a chief superintendent, John Courtney, and I think they wrote books. Certainly, uh, John Courtney wrote a book, It Was Murder. And John Courtney, I remember him on the, on the radio, he had a swanky accent. I don't know, did Chief Superintendent Dan Murphy uh, uh, know it, but he was a specialist, and in fairness to him, he did get to be a Chief Superintendent by keeping a close eye and getting to know uh, the, the murder situation in Ireland. And certainly he wasn't too bad. And John Courtney was able enough as well. And neither, neither uh, um, Courtney nor uh, Dan Murphy were hard drinkers. They weren't hard drinkers. So when the Duplantia murder happened, you had this disarray where the whole specialist investigation of the guards was ripped out. There was nearly no replacement. And it was left up to the local superintendent. So if you took two twin brothers, John and Paddy, and both of them joined the guards and became superintendents. John could be stationed in Ennis as for the latter part, like you'd be a while getting to be a superintendent, you might never get to be. But we'd say John became the superintendent for the last 15 years of his life in Ennis and County Clare, and there was no murder. He was dealing with uh, sudden deaths, uh, um, fires, uh, IRA activities, subversive activities, explosive uh, protection, bank protection, 
appointment of people, the promotion of sergeants, the promotion of inspectors, and also with dealing with the various crimes. And he had to go to court twice a, a month and he had to present his cases. So he was busy. He was busy. But there might never be a murder. His counterpart, let's say somewhere else, where would you name? Uh, I named Ennis, we'd say Ballinasloe. Just please don't hold me. I don't know if there's a super there. We'd say Ballinasloe. He's there and it's the very same. He's doing the very same. He gets through it and maybe would get promoted as well to chief superintendent. But there comes a murder. And now everything is on him. The whole media is there and all. And he's not tuned for this at all. His brother down in Ennis is not up to it. And he's not up to it. But that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Understand that? And so you've got this thing that it's very hard to have your officers and your people skilled in everything. If they're going to be skilled in administrating a district and doing a good job, then uh, they're not going to be maybe that skilled in murders and all that. They could be. But therein comes the problem in Ireland. There is no procedure to identify proper talent. There is no procedure to identify analytical skills. There is no procedure to have the people promoted who do this, who are good at this. There is a procedure. If you have an uncle, a politician, you will get promoted. If your, grandfa if your father is a chief superintendent, you will get promoted. The ordinary Joe Soap may or may not get promoted. There is a body of good, skillful people in the guards who cannot ever get up through the ranks. They're plodding the beat, even though they're highly skilled and highly qualified. That is the sad part. There was a case, several, I could, could tell you several cases. Not all superintendents are corrupt. And many of the ones who were corrupt were made retire. There was examples, I made videos on some. And I'm not saying they were corrupt in the job, but they were certainly corrupt and convicted afterwards. There are instances where the Gardaí locally had to get the superintendent away on holidays, away off somewhere else, don't ask me, to raid certain premises for drugs where he was involved and helping the people who owned the premises. He was friendly with them, not necessarily doing drugs, but he just didn't want them to uh, give them any hassle. And the guards knew when they'd raid this guy abroad would ring up the station to try and block it and they had all the phones to the station were pulled out and he couldn't get through. This is the sort of stuff happened, but that's kind of the exception, right? You have swanky guards and fancy guards and they dress up lovely and if they come to the scene they're well dressed or they look the part. And there was one fella, all he wanted was to get his picture in the paper. He, he needed to get his picture in the paper and his uh, superintendent so and so and he wanted this to be shown to his mother down the country and all this this is what goes on but it, they're not all like that i emphasize it but the promotion system is not up to selecting the correct people and therefore the correct people will not join the guards because they know they'll be discriminated against and they'll be plodding the beat for the rest of their lives taking orders from some bookworm from phoenix park headquarters that never spoke to a rough and tumble person or a semi-criminal or a traveller or anything else or in his life, okay? Now, as I am a, an active farmer, I have to take phone calls on different things. I'm sorry for that. But anyway, to finish, and I'll have to make another video on this. Dr. John Harbison was the state pathologist and a damn good one. The attitude of the guard toward Dr. John, um, um, Dr. John Harbison who was an English accent and all that was. He was a brutal butcher because he was cutting up corpses. What did they think his role was? What did they think his role was? That was his job, to dissect a corpse and find out the cause of death. 99% of the Gardaí, including the high ranks, felt that he was to be treated with disdain because, and the government as well. Dr. John Harbison pleaded from 1990, at least, for an assistant. They refused, R-E-F-U-S-E-D. We'll do another video on, the, on, the, on all the politicians that were involved in the time. They wouldn't give him an assistant. Uh, the result was, he lived in Dublin. Whenever he got a call, he had to be ready to up sticks and drive his private car to the scene. They never gave him a guard a driver. They never gave him any taxi facility. They give him nothing. He was an excellent pathologist. 
good enough. I think most of the mistakes were made was because they just made it impossible for him. If they got him to retire, they would. They wanted a woman. Oh, oh we get a woman in there. Oh, Dr. Mary Cassidy, an RTE will do a, a program. Oh, she's a female. Oh, and there's another one in there now, Lynn. Bless the luck to them all. Oh, to do a program and just to, but they wouldn't do it on Harbison because they didn't like him because he told it as it was. And it's this old woke cardiology. RT is still doing videos on murders and everything else, but they'll never tell you that. Okay, so the bowel John Harbison wanted an assistant and the night of the De Plante of murder, he was having a social outing for his, I think his children. He was at a social outing, outing. He was not a drinker. He'd go down to the scene, he'd have a meal in the hotel and he'd go on and do the post-mortem and he'd have a guard assistant there to collect all the evidence and, photo and be a photographer and all that. But he'd have to drive down there. So the night of the, twin of the murder, he was up in Dublin at a little social outing. He may have had a glass of wine, I don't know. But he got the call to go down immediately to Cork and he couldn't drive for a start. There was no facility to get him down there and he was expected to leave. There was no assistant who he could ring up and say, go down and do the basics, make sure the scene is properly preserved and all that. And I'll be down there first thing in the morning. That's all he wanted. They refused to give him an assistant. This is so important, folks. They refused. Those of you who have parents that voted Fianna Fáil, you tell them you're responsible for this failure. Those of you who have parents who voted Fine Gael and Labour, you tell them you voted for this. They wouldn't give him an assistant. And anyone who wants to contribute here, please do. Has he an assistant? Has the state pathologist an assistant at the moment? The other thing, even that time, a man doing pathologist, he, he's a brute. Oh, he could be cutting up a woman's body. Oh, change, you can't have that. Oh, he's a fucking brute. Hey, he's a, Oh, oh, there's a woman there. Oh, oh, there's a woman. Oh, a woman. Oh, she's going to. Oh, she's great. She's a woman. Ew. And this is what happened with Noreen Sullivan, the commissioner. There was a mess there with Martin Cannon, and they needed someone to fix it. And they never assessed was she up to the job. Now, I have nothing against women. I could tell you I have relations who are women, and by God, I'll tell you, I wouldn't. They're the best people. There's a couple of guards in Dublin good strong women and they, they take the bat out to get closer and they'll be better in a row than a man and a lot of women are just as good but the simple selection on the basis of gender is not adequate you have to select all told in any event John Harbison would have given his right arm to have any of those present women is she Lindy or something like that Linda something and or Dr Mary Cassidy as his assistant if he had had them, he could ring them up. When he, I'm going to have a little party tonight. Uh, will you, Mary, will you be on call? I'll be here, Dr. John. Good girl, Mary. I'll go to the party. And he could go into his party. And when he got the call, he could ring Mary Cassidy and say, Mary, I'm here and I'm not going to leave at this. I have a few drinks on me or whatever it was. He died last year. Uh, would, can you do it? I'm away. I'm away. I'm gone, Dr. John. That's all he wanted. That is all he wanted. And they were never going to give it to him. They were never going to give it to him. These villains. What do you call Was that old Francis Fitzgerald? You can get the date, 1996. See who the, the commissioner was. He Culligan, no, Culligan. Pat Bourne came in. There was Culligan before that, and then Pat Bourne. But it was all this old baloney with the performance development and review and their rotating positions and all of that coupled with the fact that they wouldn't give Dr. Carberson an office. Now Whitehall Yard the station is actually the office for the state pathologist. He had nothing on his back room. That's all he had. The guards took all the samples away. <coughs> so that's the start of my rant on Ian Bailey. Uh, I, as I say, I have up interruptions, I have a farm to run, but it's nice to get this out. What a crowd of villains. Oh, oh, the villains. And I'm the only person in the world of 8 billion that's able to tell this story exactly as it is. It's not in anybody's interest, no matter whom you are, even you're a fully member of Sinn Féin or Fine Gael or, Fine Gael or you're a doctor or anything. It's not in anyone's interest to have no investigative uh, procedure for murder. It's not in anybody's interest. You need, it could be your daughter, it could be my son, it could be anyone. You need to have a proper investigative procedure. And I think I've outlined the case now. We won't deal with it today about what the situation is like. I'm giving you the historical 
significance. Big owl idiots going off to America and that Eamon Doherty, he was a commissioner, a pure tyrant, and he went off to America and they drove him mad and he came down as commissioner to Temple Moor Training Centre and he drove the place mad. He was iron heel discipline. He took in none of the good points about management and used all the bad points. You with me now? So, so this was the thing. They got this going. Oh, we, I'll put for performance development review, I'll get promoted. Oh, I'll put forward job rotation. Sure, it's a fantastic idea. And there was nobody in government to tell them, would you ever cop yourselves on? What kind of nonsense are you talking about here? You've got to, if your guard is doing a job and he's having a few cases, that's all right. If he's not, you need to have a word. You need to deal with that. But essentially, you need to make sure that good working people get up. But they didn't want the crime to the mainstream guard, the authorities and the government. Crime was an unwanted thing. It's like me having mice in the house. Well, uh, 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 it gets so bad, you have to get a cat. You don't want the mice. You'd rather do something else, but you have to acknowledge that problem. And so they didn't want to acknowledge it. They wanted to be blown about all the great things they did because they knew that people didn't think they'd ever be the victim of murder. But still in all, there was a bit of, of law and order in, in, in people's voters' minds. In the 1996 general election, law and order was issue number 14 with the Irish people and army pay was issue number 6. Folks, not too easy to make this video. I'll have to make another one. I say, uh, I'm, I have people waiting on me outside and things like that to get work done. But that's it. Wait till you see. Wait till you see. The Willabaloo will be on Rat and Festive Radio Television where they give real and in the ear. They lie every bit. 99% of it is lies. You've got the truth from me. Give me a thumbs up and thumbs down. <laughs> Hopefully we'll come back again. Please understand. I'm caught here by the by time i just can't i just can't do the thing in a quality way but we'll be back to you again and we'll try and improve it thank you very much